What's up, everybody? It's Bo here, and we are back on FanCraft. That's right. We are here in the Marvel District, but not for very long because we are actually going to be heading out to the Star Wars District for our project today. Now, overall, over the last several episodes and just kind of in general, my mindset has all been about preparing for the future because we've made a lot of progress. The Marvel District is pretty much completed. I mean, there's some little areas that could be used for other builds, but in terms of what I had hoped to accomplish here, it's it's kind of, I'm kind of done. I kind of did what I had intended to do. So, you know, it's it's good, it's great, and you know, more power to anybody that wants to add to the Marvel District, but I, I think for my part, my builds are done. Unless inspiration strikes, which is very, very possible. Token Town, I've got an idea for a future build, but I haven't exactly just nailed the design yet. For the most part, I'm finding that I actually do enjoy building things just directly here in survival. But at the same time, this one is kind of a unique build. I want to use some different blocks that I don't normally use. And it would be kind of over there-ish is where I'm picturing it. And that is if I even do it. And that's a big if because I just, I haven't quite figured it out yet. So, but that's neither here nor there. We're going to talk about what's going on in the Star Wars district because I'm very, very, very pleased with how so many awesome builds have come together here in the Star Wars district. And yeah, I mean, it looks really, really great. We've got some awesome builds. You know, the Spice Mines of Kessel, it's small, but I really, really love what I was able to create there. And honestly, there's just one kind of last build that I want to put here and then kind of call my time in the Star Wars district, or at least projects in the Star Wars district, done. And that is right over here. Now, as you probably know, in the Star Wars district, we break things up by biomes. And this has kind of been our forest swamp biome that, that kind of connects with more of, you know, our landing pad kind of situation that we've got going on over here. But regardless, this whole area is very bland. There's really not a whole lot going on. I mean, we've got the Ewok village, which was one of the first things that was built here. But beyond that, there's just a lot of green with not a lot going on on it. And so I'm gonna do something a little different. Now, at one point I was actually considering making a Ewok kind of Kashyyyk type of tree or possibly village, but really kind of recreating Chewbacca's house from the holiday special kind of right around here-ish. But I've decided that there's not really much that it would make a lot of sense in terms of a shop. Pretty much all of the builds in the Star Wars district, as with the other commerce districts, deal with some kind of commerce or shop. And I don't really, I mean, we've already got two wood shops. There's not a whole lot that I could do with a Wookiee tree that would make a whole lot of sense, at least not to me. So I've decided what we need to be selling is kyber crystals. All right, so technically not kyber crystals, technically amethyst crystals, but I was thinking that it would be really cool to kind of have a shop dedicated to selling amethyst in the Star Wars district with kind of a nod to them being kind of kyber crystal-esque. I mean, you can kind of, you know, make a connection there. I think it works. I remember in the early days of planning out for FanCraft, I considered making like some sort of amethyst shop in maybe like the snow biome and kind of recreate the temple that the Jedi younglings used to go on their trials. But that was before I realized that the Jedi temple itself was gonna be so massive and so close. So yeah, didn't really think that one all the way through, but that's okay. There is another place where one might go to get a kyber crystal and that is from a Jedi master and perhaps one that lives in the swamps. That's right, we're gonna be making Yoda's house today, Yoda's hut. And uh, yeah, we're going to be putting it right here in kind of this forest and we're going to kind of turn it into a little bit more of a boggy biome right in the middle of this kind of grassy area. I think it's going to be great. It's a weird shape and you know, it, oof. okay, so it'll, it'll make more sense as I kind of build pieces of it. So let's kind of get cracking on it and I'll show you what we're going to kind of make. So it'd probably be helpful to kind of think about what Yoda's house actually looks like, okay? And I'm, I'm kind of doing a blend of kind of a, a play set that I saw based off of this and just the original Ralph McQuarrie art where there's kind of like a little point to the top. But broadly speaking, it's rounded, though not a perfect circle. And so I'm going to try something a little different here where I'm going to do more of kind of a rounded-esque shape and we're gonna build the tree around it. That's gonna, you know, come afterwards. But I have almost, it looks almost like a potato shape, honestly, that I have going on at the moment. But I wanted to do something different where instead of doing kind of the traditional, you're looking face on and there's the rounded door, 
I wanted to kind of angle it a little bit to add to that offsetedness of the entire build. So at the very least, this gives us a basic shape to work off of and also a door with, as you can see, a little path. We'll probably extend the little, you know, the mud kind of going around on either side as well. But for right now, this is a good start. All right, and through the miracle of time, I think we've got something very special on our hands. Oh yeah, okay, all right, this is, this is kind of cool. This is kind of cool. I'm actually super impressed with how this shape turned out. So, all right. The Ralph McQuarrie kind of look, right? Like the look that Ralph McQuarrie had kind of resembled something like a little bit like a beehive or like a gourd. And that was kind of what I was trying to capture with this style for Yoda's house. I wanted to make sure that there were also windows. At least, you know, we got at least one window off to the side right here that you can kind of see in. And oh my goodness, is that interior? Did I also do the interior? Yes, yes, I think I did. I'll just go up in here and bada bing, bada boo. I think this looks really great. We've got the little stove, you know, where Yoda be like making his little gumbo and everything, which is great. We got the bed where Yoda um, spends his last moments. And we also have kind of a little seating table right here. And of course, what is this? Could this be, ladies and gentlemen, we are selling the amethyst. That's right. We've got our kyber crystals, so to speak, on sale right here. One diamond per stack for the shards. And then it's one diamond for four of the uh, the clusters. The, you break these apart, it basically makes an entire stack of the shards. So it's, it's a one-to-one -one ratio right there. But yeah, this is really looking good. I am so thrilled with how this turned out. Now, I guess there could be kind of some things hanging down in here. Like I remember there's like a snake or something like that that was like chilling out in his, his place. And I think we might grow some things down from here, but first we need this to not just stand on its own because of course this is not just a hut that's like out in the middle of, you know, the swamp. It's actually, it's got a kind of a tree, kind of a dead tree that's growing around it or that, you know, it's built into the side of. I love how this kind of plays into the idea of, you know, strong in the light, strong in the dark. Like, you know, you think about Yoda's hut, it's filled with life. It's like teeming with life. It's this little, you know, kind of bright little spot amidst this dark, dead thing. And I feel those extremes can kind of be on display here. I want there to be kind of a large tree with kind of some dead leaves hanging off of it. And this is where I'm about to get super nervous because we're about to try this, okay? We're about to try to make this thing work and see what it looks like. But I, I don't know about making trees. I know that I'm going to use these mangrove roots as the dead leaves. I kind of have an idea for that. We'll have some also just, just some regular mangrove leaves as well to kind of play around with. Ooh, and I guess for the trunk, should I use mangrove? Well, it's kind of expensive. Okay, I, I could probably work with this. I think at the moment, nobody's really selling it because of how difficult it is to collect. Maybe maybe we might come up with like an idea for a mangrove store at some point. I'm super nervous. I really don't know anything about making trees. Okay, that's, that's not terrible. Now we could go super tall, I suppose, or we could kind of keep it smaller like this. I feel like this is like the safer route to go is kind of keep it a little bit more of a smaller shape. I'm inclined to actually push this up a little bit. Oh, I'm nervous to do that because I actually kind of like these branches, this branch structure that I've got going on right now. Ooh. And then there's also part of me that doesn't want to overly obstruct the dragon because I, I really like the dragon, even though it doesn't, you know, thematically, I've been trying to kind of cover up things so that they don't, you don't feel out of place. But I mean, like, you know, you're, you're going to see night is such a freaking... Like, let's just acknowledge that Knight is incredible at Minecraft, and, like, his builds are so just next level that you kind of, even though they don't necessarily fit the aesthetic, you kind of want to, like, let them shine still. That being said, I also do want this to feel right, and I also want some good, like, hangingness to our dead leaves. So I think, uh, I think we're actually going to remove these and push up and, and make the, the trunk a little bit taller. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, we got a shape going. We, we definitely have a shape going. And I think I'm trying to look at this thing from all angles to get a sense if it makes sense. And it doesn't have to be like the prettiest tree, but it does need to look 
right-ish. The top looks really jacked up compared to the bottom. I think there's some adjustments I can make up there. I think I made it worse. I, th I Yep, I think that may have made it worse. Now, I know some of you are thinking like, okay, mangrove roots really for leaves? Yes, actually, for leaves. I think that's really, really good. Specifically for dead leaves. Now, mangrove roots, I have said before, this is like my least favorite block in the entire game. And I have tried so many times to figure out ways to use it. And eventually, I just gave up. Like, I literally just gave up trying to make mangrove roots work. But recently, I can't remember exactly when it was. I was, I was kind of fooling around with a design, I want to say for something else. It wasn't even for this. And I realized that they actually look really good, like just dead leaves hanging. Like they look all wilty and nasty and everything else. Like they've never to me really resembled the roots they're supposed to look like, which I think is also part of the problem is that we too often associate like the block by what it says it is as opposed to what it looks like. And if you get hung up on that, then you really miss out on a lot of really cool things that you can do. You know, it's times like these that I do kind of wish that we had gotten the crab. Remember, that was the whole thing about the crab is that, like, it was supposed to, if you were holding it, you could reach just a little further. It's been a few times while, during this build, I'm like, ah, if I could just do like, just a little, little bit further, that'd be great. Oh, yeah, that is exactly what I was kind of going for. Okay. There's still some more that can be done. I'm technically out of mangrove roots now, so I'll need to go and collect some at some point to kind of fill this out. Maybe a little bit more here and there, but probably not much. This is kind of what I was talking about. I do want to figure out how I can maybe gnarl this up a little bit, maybe put some different uh, logs in here and there to kind of give it a little bit more of a rot type feel or a darker type feel. And then also we need to remove this red. Like, I do kind of like the fact that there is, you know, kind of a, a sithy darkness associated with red, but at the same time, it's not what I'm going for at the moment. Like, I just, I want the idea of, like, decay leading to life. And in fact, let's see if we can kind of come in here. I probably need to get, like, some vines, like some hanging vines, probably from the nether here and there. But, like, yeah, just kind of give it a little bit more life on the inside. That's, that's great. That's what I want right there. And then around the base, I'll probably take all this area and kind of make it a little bit more boggy using some of these blocks right here. But for the most part, I think that's looking pretty good. I really, I dig it. I think that's right. A bit of tweaking here and there, and then I think we got what we're after. But um, yeah, for the most part, Yoda's hut is looking good, is looking very good indeed. Oh, I guess, I, you know, I could put, I wonder if I could put like some clusters you know, some of the amethyst clusters maybe growing off of it, almost like their little moss or something like that. Ooh, I could get some um, coral and like put some dead coral around it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Ideas are happening. I had to mine all of those amethyst crystals and in the process did something that I have never actually done before in the history of a game called Minecraft. And that is I've actually taken the time to actually use minecarts for their intended purpose. I actually am using minecarts for mining. There we go. I've created this Minecraft system, uh, this minecart system to bring me around to all of the different like places to mine amethyst. And I think in total, I've got like six or seven connected to this minecart. Yeah, so like here is the first one. And for the sake of our build, we're actually going to prune a couple of these kind of smaller bits here. This one's nice because I've actually taken the time to build this little walking structure to be able to get all of these. But the rest of them, I haven't quite gotten to that point yet. Oh, no, 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 wrong way. Oh, this is the only problem with this system. That's fine. That's fine. I, you know what? That's fine because... The end of the track, this actually, like I said, goes around to like six, maybe seven different amethysts, all kind of in a relatively nearby region. I mean, not that nearby because, you know, hence the minecarts. But if we actually go to the last one, let me see if I can do that one. No, wait, hang on. There we go. There we go. Now we're going. So, yeah, on my way back from the last one, I actually found a cave. And it's a pretty cool looking cave, as you can see. Like, this is a really sweet looking structure area that I kind of want to do something with in the near future. And I'm, I haven't quite figured out what, but it's a cool space that I'd like to 
to do something in. I like dealing with caves and, you know, secret structures and, and underground hideouts and all that kind of good stuff. It's it's kind of a hallmark of my building style and, and my gameplay, but I'll probably save it. I'll probably save that for something fun, especially because it is so close to my base compared to everything else. Theoretically, I won't be. Okay, wait, where did I... Right, this one's kind of tricky because this one, if you're not too careful, it might accidentally go either back the way it came or you might skip this one entirely. To be honest, I mostly have just tried to get back through my system, but I'm passing by like some of these that are pretty ready to go. Right, and then that one brings me to the big final cave area I was talking about earlier. I'm gonna do some cool things. I'm gonna make some cool pillars here. I've already kind of carved out, you can kind of see down there another track from my base. That's gonna be a fun project in the future. And now we're back, okay. <laughs> okay, all right, we did it. We did. So yeah, so mine, mine uh, actually using mine carts for mining, how about that? Finish the build I have. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, uh, yeah, look, I finished it. I feel really good about this. I've added a little bit I don't know if you could tell or not. You can kind of see up there. I've added a little bit of the amethyst kind of hanging off the tree. I've put some dead coral, giving it kind of that, you know, just like stuff growing that probably shouldn't grow, but, you know, it's dead, so that's what's going to happen type of stuff. I've also given it a few logs with no leaves hanging down, and I think that helps. I think that really does. I think it kind of adds to the time that this thing has been dead and decaying. And I think it looks really good. And then, of course, down here, as you can see, I've decided to kind of create a little bit of a just a little river or a little water kind of coming through, adding to that mossy bog bayou type feel. I've also kind of built this up a little path that kind of connects as well. You can see the tree from behind. So if you come through, you got the path. You walk around the path. It kind of like disappears a little bit, but that's OK because it's all blended. And then the nice kind of warm, welcoming home of one master yoda i think it looks great i think it looks awesome i'm really pleased with how this turned out you got a little window right here look at this yeah yeah <laughs> wait can i can i do this look at that oh finished the build i have <laughs> wow okay this is great oh man i love it i love it so much i'm also wondering if i should kind of bring this kind of bogginess over to the other side more i mean admittedly uh Huh, I am actually, maybe we need to have some trees over here to really kind of communicate that this is a forest and this is like a dead tree in the forest. Yeah, okay, so we'll go ahead, we'll throw some of these here, here, kind of laid out some ideas of what might be a good spot. One on this side, and then my mindset is that the trees will grow, we'll put some like big spruce trees around this to kind of give it more of that indoor feel behind it, and then that'll be a nice transition into this Dagobah, uh, you know, I don't know, little little mini microbiome. I mean, these are already mini biomes in and of themselves. So I guess the Dagobah is really more of a microbiome. Ooh, can this grow? Is this not how you... Does this not work? Why isn't it working? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can't bone mill these. I thought I, thought I knew what I was doing. Oh, nope, that worked. Okay, that's much smaller than what I was going for. But you know what? We'll take it. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Let's see what this one does. Come on, come on, come on. I don't get it. What what's the what's the rules here? Is is it just random or am I messing something up? Maybe maybe it's because of the proximity to this is that that's messing it up. Maybe it needs a, a larger range. Okay, that one that one did grow. In fact, it it even grew like right alongside of it. So that can't be it. Although I will say this is working, I think. This is kind of adding to that forest biome feel. They don't all have to be huge. Maybe these trees are trying to teach me that as a lesson. Like they don't, they just, they don't all have to be huge. But that, okay, but they do have to be trees. <laughs> what? What? It does give more life to this biome. And by the way, let me just go ahead and make a note of this. These trees, except for the one that I just built, not, not the dead tree, but everything else, these can be cut down. So if you are in the Star Wars district and you want to build something over here in kind of this foresty area, whatever it may be, we can cut these down. This is mostly aesthetic. I am a little worried though that I went a little too crazy on this. And I'm, I'm even more worried because my, my response, my, my desire to fix this is 
like tripling down. I'm like going to keep on making giant trees and I'm just going to put a few in, in, in jungle trees in here too and see if that, if that can kind of like blend it a little bit. I think that's pretty good. I think we kind of created a nice jungle and like forest that works out well. We've even got, <laughs> we've even got a bear that popped up an Ewok. It, it works really well at least from the platform. You know, I've, I've mentioned it before, but like so much of the Star Wars district, the idea is like, how does everything look from the platform, right? Can we do a 360 and feel somewhat immersed in a Star Wars world? And I think we, I think we, I think we done did it. I think we did it. And if we go over here, oops, if we go over here, we're very much, look at the, oh, and then look at Slave One looks really cool coming through the forest and everything. Yes. Okay. I feel good about this. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I love the way that when you add trees, the way that just kind of creates new natural framing for everything. You've got the ATST there. You've got Jabba's palace in the background. You've even got the top of the Avengers tower, which you can kind of barely see out in the distance over the fantastic four building. This is really good. I think it really looks fantastic. And most importantly, we can now sell these kyber crystals, I mean, I'm sorry, amethyst shards here in the Star Wars district that the crafters will hopefully uh, soon come by and, and purchase. So hopefully you have enjoyed this episode. I know I've enjoyed making this build. I really like it. It stands out while also blending in, and that is exactly what I was hoping for. So I think this build is done. Thank you all so very much. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I've got one more build that I want to do in the classic districts. I've, I've kind of, you know, been thinking through it. And while it is probably of everything that I've built this season, one of the more challenging builds, I am going to attempt it in Tolkien Town. In fact, you can kind of see the layouts for it in the back right there. But that's going to be on the next video. I hope you'll be able to join me then. Be sure to like, subscribe, all the good things that one does for a YouTube channel, the videos they're enjoying, especially if you've watched till the end. Really appreciate you. Hope you all have a great day. And until next time, goodbye.